Rose. Welcome back to another animation roundup. I have to say, I don't even really know where to start with this. I hate being negative. I don't enjoy it and very few people enjoy listening to it. It's no secret that I don't particularly care for this arc, but I don't cover narrative regularly. So the vast majority of my videos since this arc began have been exceptionally positive, celebrating the improvements Super has seen to its visuals. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm just making negative video after negative video since episode 123, and I assure you that's not an issue with me. Super seems to be really struggling as it reaches its conclusion, and it's very depressing to watch as that carries into these climactic episodes. I 100% understand that episode 130 and possibly parts of 131 are going to be the main bulk of this fight, but this episode is the opening of the big rematch that leads into Goku's mastery over Ultra Instinct. It needed to open with a bang, but it just didn't. In fact, the vast majority of the episode is focused on the stands talking about the fight rather than us actually seeing it. Show, don't tell is one of the fundamental aspects of storytelling, and this episode seriously ignores that. You don't have to take my word for it either. I spent earlier today calculating how much was reused animation, how much was new animation, and how much was simply stills or digital explosions. The episode as a whole, when you take away openings, endings, and recaps, is 18 minutes long. Exactly two minutes of that runtime was reused footage, with the bulk of it being action from the opening. 2.05 minutes of that was new action, anything that went beyond mostly stills, and trust me I was very generous when I was counting here, that means that the rest of the episode was 14 minutes of either looking at talking heads, digital explosions, or just stills of Goku and Jiren. That's absolutely crazy to me, and don't get me wrong, Dragon Ball Z absolutely had its fair share of reused animation here and there, and it certainly wasn't a stranger to lengthy cutaways with minutes upon minutes of talking, but it was more than capable of delivering multiple episodes of satisfying action when it really needed to. These types of episodes at this point in time are why I really think it's a good idea that Super is ending. I'm sure these last two episodes will be great, although there was more reuse in the NEP, but at what cost? Super is barely keeping its head afloat, and I think it needs to go away for a while, overhaul its entire production, and come back with an adequate schedule that prevents these regular occurrences from happening ever again. Dragon Ball is loved around the world, it is the biggest moneymaker for all parties involved by an astronomical margin, and it really deserves better, the talented animators and directors going to waste here deserve better. I know a lot of people are really excited by the last few minutes of the episode, and it's great, it really is, but don't let one good scene cloud the issues that penetrated the remainder of the episode. Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at who did what, what worked, what didn't, and all of the specifics as per usual. Obviously, with everything I just spoke about, this is going to be fairly brief, so hopefully you can forgive me there. The first half is supervised by Koji Nashizawa, and this is actually one of the few, if not the only episode where he doesn't provide any key animation of his own, instead leaving his mark in the form of fairly heavy corrections throughout this half. His work looks a little bit different compared to normal, and I can only imagine that's because he's correcting the likes of Yoshitaka Yoshima, so their styles kind of mix and form this weird hybrid. It's not really bad, but this is probably one of Nashizawa's weakest efforts on Super. Tadayoshi Yamamuro appears to be all over this episode, and while his corrections are primarily in the second half, he does correct some of the more pivotal moments like the opening with Goku and Jiren, and parts of Vegeta's speech. I'm not really sure who animated the unique action in this half, but I have to say I wasn't a huge fan seeing it in the full context of the episode, despite finding it fairly promising in the preview. The flurry of punches have been blurred since the NEP, and seeing Goku and Jiren snap between different still poses while the flurries continued seemed kind of awkward. This very limited approach continues for quite some time after they hit the ground too, and that's kind of it as far as animation goes in this half. The primary draw for me absolutely comes from Masato Mitsuka's storyboard and direction, whether it be the awesome camera work involving eyes at the start or interesting framing of certain dialogue scenes, he definitely does a lovely job of framing the situation 
particularly with his use of colour from the various explosions. This was something I praised Kazuya Kurosawa for in his last episode, it is a terrific way of creating atmosphere in conjunction with good music placement. Of course, this first half storyboard is severely limited by the fact that much of it isn't unique, or if it is unique, it's being used over and over again, so lighting and music placement are really the only significant impact Mitsuka has as a director in this half. Thankfully, the second half of the episode is a significant improvement with far less bank animation and Yuichi Kurosawa taking over for the first portion of this half. Kurosawa's been with the series since the start of the Universe 6 arc, and it's been such an interesting experience watching his style develop over these past 100 episodes. His presence throughout this tournament has been quite small, so to have him show up here in a big way for what is presumably his last appearance is really satisfying. He appears to animate the fight that opens the second half, which is by far the highlight of this episode by an absolute landslide. It's got a cool rotation, some awesome background animation, and the most exciting part for me has to be the explosion, which can contains possibly the nicest looking smoke I've ever seen in Super. I'm so happy it didn't get blurred like most of the effects work in this series. The last time Kurosawa showed us this gorgeous work was all the way back in episode 61, and it was sadly pretty blurred there. I have to say though, despite the cool movement, I'm seriously impressed by Kurosawa's character art here. His feature placement can often be a little bit questionable, but it's pretty much ideal here, with these being some of my favourite drawings of Goku in the series. The poses are terrific, and of of course, Kurosawa is the king of hands, they look delightful. After some more reused scenes, we get another unique bit of animation that's unfortunately pretty rough. The character art actually seems kind of unfinished to me, but the rotation it's part of is pretty neat, so I hope to see this corrected for the Blu-rays. It'd be a shame to see what appears to be the skeleton of a good scene go to waste. It's around this point that the final supervisor, Hirotaka Ni, takes over, although his style isn't particularly dominant until his own key animation that we'll touch on shortly. The chief animation supervisor, Takeo Ide, corrects a large chunk of the dialogue in this half. He does a decent job though, I do think his approach is a little bit basic in comparison to what Ni and Kurosawa are surrounding it with, so it does stick out just a little bit. That's a nitpick more than anything though, these are pretty solid drawings. Next to Ide, we also have Yamamuro's most prominent corrections as the episode heads towards the big reveal. Although Ni's Jiren is largely left alone, the vast majority of Goku shots have been totally redrawn. This is obviously something we expected based on the preview comparisons I discussed earlier in the week, but it's disappointing all the same. To see all of these lovely shots with fantastic Takahashi-esque shading that mesh wonderfully with Kurosawa, only to then cut to lots of pretty standard Goku drawings is a real shame. It's not something anyone outside of very specific circles is going to care about, but knowing artists taking cues from Takahashi are being redrawn during pivotal moments is unfortunate. I can understand why the final shot of the episode was redrawn since I was told by an animator on the show a while ago that there's actually a mandate that all first reveals of merchandisable forms or characters need to be on model so that they're recognisable on the shelves. That is fine, I get that, I might not like it but I understand it, but I just don't really get why that needed to extend outside of these moments too. Particularly as I said, since Jiren and the reused Kurosawa shots are so clearly channeling one particular style. Either way, I think Ni's short action animation did a good job of showcasing this new offensive side of Ultra Instinct. The snappy movement and neat reactions from Jiren as he's being punched well executed, and this entire section is really Masato Mitsuka actually getting the opportunity to really show off his directing chops. This is far and away the most colourful section of the episode. It's totally shrouded in chaos and it's all the better for it, particularly in conjunction with the very strong music choices. Goku glowing prior to the reveal is a very awesome choice and the way he's framed is even better. It's so intense, I think my favourite is the close-up of his eyes as the aura shell starts to peel away. Again, when all the gods start to stand up, the compositions are super unique. This is everything last week's board wasn't and I couldn't be happier. It's a shame the whole episode couldn't have been this strong. And I think that's ultimately the crux of the issue for me. The first half of this episode is a total write-off, and the second half strengths are only really in the first and last few minutes. They're exceptionally well done, so I do understand why many fans love this episode and felt that these issues more than made up for the shortcomings on the whole. I guess for me, my perspective is that this is the climax of the tournament, and action and transformations are entirely visual components. You can't fall back on dialogue with them like this episode did in many cases. In the case of reuse, you can get a Away with it if it's in a smaller capacity, but with it being equal parts with the new content, any real impact is lost because you're sat there distracted by the fact you've seen this all before. As I said, these staff members deserve so much better, and they're capable of so much better. Mitsuka definitely didn't deserve to 
go out like this. I hope and pray that episode 130 in two weeks will be everything we want. I can see Tate and Manabe in the preview, so all limbs are crossed that they can deliver something awesome. If we get an extended preview again on Sunday, I'll go over that in as much detail as possible. But for now, let me know how you felt about this most recent episode. Did you enjoy it? Could it have been better? And what are your expectations for these upcoming episodes? As always, be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you're new, forgive me for being negative yet again, and I will see you next time.